Thiles is the, the sexiest word in brewing right now. I think it's been for probably the last couple of years, but I don't think a lot of people completely understand it. And to be honest, sometimes I wonder if, if I do even that well. Thiles is just a, a sulfur compound that is in hops in a really low amount compared to other uh, compounds like uh, myrcene, for example, it's hardly in there at all. But they're important because their sensory threshold is so low. And that means you don't need a lot of the thiol to have an impact on the beer. And so it was clear that they're in the hops, but how much is actually getting into the beer was, was kind of a question. Thiols are compounds that have aromatic qualities in extremely small amounts, so we're talking in the parts per trillion. Very, very little of it is needed to have an aromatic impact. When you're getting thiols, you're gonna be very familiar with the fruits that come across with these components as well. So a lot of tropical fruits, so guava, passion fruit, like grapefruit, they all come in with this like super style, like rich component and it is very reminiscent in most people's heads with, you know, tropical and citrus. So what we mean by thiolized or thiolizing is giving our brewing strains the ability to take thiol precursors and render them aromatic so that we can smell them and amplify these tropical notes. Malt and hops are really high in precursor thiols, which precursor means that they're bound, they're soluble, they're not aroma active, they're kind of locked in the beer and not coming through to you in sensory, so it's just more potential in the beer that's waiting and sitting there, unlocked potential, you're not getting aroma out of it. There's loads of it, loads of it. So as soon as you can access that precursor and convert it into a free thiol, you're producing tons of aroma. Now that all of these precursors are in there, unlocking these formally locked compounds, you're increasing these flavor and aromatic compounds by up tenfold. It was exciting for me to see actual tested results from a strain like Cosmic Punch that was getting levels of thiols way above what other beers were getting with just the precursors and grain alone. So for me that was interesting right there and then I, I can't help to think, well can we push it even more if we use some of these high bound thiol hops in the process. That's where it was great to work with Omega on this because they are testing some of this stuff as you kind of have these ideas and sometimes you can save yourself some batches and some experiments when there's that, that back and forth like that. It's been a fun process to, uh, to play with. So whenever we're doing these experiments, we are scientists, we set up controls. So we have you know parental strains next to the modified strains and we do everything blinded and just see if we can you know pick out which is the thiolized strain and which is the parental strain. It's significant enough that Everybody who's been doing this is getting it 100% of the time. It's obvious. It's crazy to actually taste and smell the difference side by side with another beer, and it is vastly different. Modern brewing, it's a science at the end of the day, and it's continuing to evolve. So this process, we think, is just the beginning of using our resources to help brewers continue pushing those boundaries with fun flavors and new styles. Having strains like Cosmic Punch, it allows you a chance to kind of step back and create beers that are, are unique and ones that I don't think you could have created three, four years ago. But overall, it's another tool in the toolbox for a brewer. Brewers are going to like this because it's going to allow them to get aromatics that they had normally thought they could only get from very expensive hops, but they can get from simply their malt choices or from grape-derived products or from hops that aren't that expensive. And they're gonna be able to draw these notes out of it and add this color to their palette in a very unique way from unique ingredients. My excitement is just to see how creative brewers get. I think this can build into a lot of different beer styles and maybe even new beer styles. It's bringing a completely new concept to beer. We did a collaboration with Omega and Phantasm. Phantasm is essentially the dried skins of Sauvignon Blanc wine grapes in New Zealand. And the idea really is, you know, these grapes have already made wine, but they still have a bunch of these precursors still in them. Phantasm is taking these Sauvignon Blanc skins and making a powder out of them. That's just a lot of potential. That's a, a precursor we can add into a beer. The beer is called Locksmith, so we use the Phantasm as a lock. So this is all these bound compounds in there and then using Cosmic Punch as the key to really unlock and free these compounds.
It's fun when you do something purposely like that and you have a little like science to like kind of back up your idea, but it's it's more fun to taste it and be like, it worked, you know, because that's really the goal. You have a sensory impact and not just make sense on paper. We want to be on that forefront of innovation. We want to work closely with Omega to make sure that we're both on the same page and trying that new stuff together and, and go through this research and development phase together to see what we can create.